Now, enough of my agony. Let's talk about uploaders because Lisa Whiteside from New Moston has sent in her podcast play Gently Drifting, which is now in pre-production as a short film. The piece is based upon the experience of a woman who discovers after several years of trying for a baby that she is in the early stages of the perimenopause. Want to know more? 30-something Louise Robson had everything she always wanted. Married to the boy she fell in love with, living in the house they had done up together and spending nights picking out girls and boys' names. Then, one five-minute chat with her doctor changed all that forever. Everything that Louise had dreamed of, hoped for and lived for was over. How could she possibly go on with life as it was? This is just a snippet of Louise's story, starring Lisa Whiteside, written by Phil Pearson, Pearson, produced and directed by Paul Ludden. The Pod Play. Jesus, am I glad to get off that. Hell is over people. What a nightmare of a woman. I heard her before I saw her. Get here, now! Thought she was shouting at me at first. I didn't see the little girl in a yellow dress standing at the train door. I was too busy trying to lug my bloody case on. The woman was leaning sideways out of her seat and yelling down the carriage aisle at the girl. She was a beautiful little thing. About six, bright ginger hair that looked on fire with big, curious eyes. Mesmerised by the people getting on and off. She had a sausage roll and a soggy Greg's wrapper in her hand. Most of it was all over her face. Someone will pinch you, the woman shouted again. Don't think I'm coming looking for you if someone takes you. I pretended I didn't hear and I walked down the carriage looking for a seat. I had no choice. The only spare one was across the aisle from rent ago. I sat down and instantly she started talking to me. I can keep the little sod. I shuffled up to the window seat as far away from her as I could. It didn't seem to bother that I didn't reply. She took a long swig from a can of Stella and lager dribbled down her chin. I was going to give her a tissue, but she wiped it away with her sleeve. I think she expected me to laugh when she belched, but I didn't. The train started to move, so the girl ran back to her seat only to get a slap across the back of her head. The woman pointed a finger in the girl's face. Do as you told in future. I pulled down the sticky tray on the back of the seat in front of me and put my handbag on it. Waited a while and then got out one of those small bottles of wine, the ones they sell next to the sandwiches in M&S. I did my best to do it quietly, one click at a time. The noise of the screw top made the woman flick her eyes in my direction. (sighs) Probably one of her favourite sounds. Uh, She said with a smart ass tone in her voice. A bit of lunchtime monkey boozing, is it, love? Sorry. What? I don't know why I was trying to sound posh. Monkey boozing, you know, drinking on your own. (laughs) Monkey boozing. Do it all the time, me. She said all proud and that. I bet you do. I wanted to say. I think she was Welsh. I turned away from her and looked out the window. The view changed quickly from the streets to factories to fields. I got lost in it. Must have been another five minutes before I pulled the plastic glass out of its plastic wrapper. Drink responsibly, the label on the bottle said. I poured a little and could feel the woman watching me. I half smiled at her. We're about the same age. The little girl was drawing the woman's Take a Break magazine. She was blacking out every other tooth on the model's face. (laughs) She must have been trying to make her look like a man. I drank the first glass in one. Poured another and held the bottle mid-air until every drop had fallen. Scenery flashed past the window, and I wasn't paying much notice until suddenly it was me staring back at me. Tunnels turn train windows into black mirrors, don't they? It's a shock to see yourself when you're not expecting to. You learn how to look into a mirror, don't you? We all have a face we pull when we look into one. I sighed out loud. It suddenly made me realise exactly what it was that made me look bad in photos. My bloody face. I just looked old. I look 50. Christ, I'm 32. Look at the state of that. Then a burst of daylight made the mirror disappear as quickly as it appeared. The little girl opposite was standing on the seat laughing and screaming at the excitement of the train going dark for a bit. The woman grabbed her. Just bloody shut it and sit down. She turned to me whilst wrestling with the girl. You don't want to do yet? You can have her for a fiver if you bloody like. I said nothing and just looked at that perfect, beautiful little girl. I'm dropping her off at her dad's, she said. I nodded, hoping she would just shut up. 
On phonology, love, she said, looking at my suitcase. No. I am, she squealed. Off to Lanza Grotti tomorrow, I am. I could practically hear my eyes rolling upwards. I'm going to get under as many Spanish waiters as I can. She opened another can. I grabbed my handbag and was just getting up when the woman on the tannoy announced, the buffet in Coach C is now open. Well, it is a new eye. You're one classy woman, Louise. No one can deny that. I didn't bother with a glass and drank the first bottle in one. Well, they're only small. Instantly, it was the best I'd felt all day. I don't care what anyone says, that numbness alcohol brings is the best antidote to life there is. I was lost for a blissful second. Brilliant. That that was just a snippet of it as well. Gently drifting. And Lisa joins me now. Good evening, Lisa. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot for uploading that. Can you tell us a little bit about the podcast? Uh, yeah, so basically that bit you heard there is very much the setup. She's on this train journey. She obviously sees this gorgeous little kid. Um, and it really makes her think about her life in terms of what she's always wanted um, always trying for a baby with a husband, um, and then obviously they find out that, well, she finds out that she's in the very early stages of menopause and the the massive impact that has on her life in terms of just completely turning it around and how she feels about herself as a woman in terms of what she can then offer a husband who's obviously been with her throughout all of this time. So, yeah, that's the setup of the piece itself. And and how does this the sort of story progress? Um, it progresses in the sense that she basically feels that as a woman, she she can't give a husband everything that she feels that he's always wanted. So she makes quite a drastic decision in order to to what she feels resolve that. I'm not gonna. I won't give everything away. Spoil, yeah, don't don't <laughs> um, any spoilers. That, that that's enough for that. That's yeah, I won't give day. you any spoilers. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, she makes quite a big decision as a result of finding out that she's got the onset of the menopause and how that affects her life and his ultimately as well. Yeah. And tell us why you wanted to get involved in this piece then, Lisa. Largely the writing. Um, Phil, Phil Pearson, the writer, is just an amazing writer. Um, he asked me to do the, the voice recording, obviously, for the pod play. And then we got really, really good feedback from it. So we said, why don't we make it into a short film? Because visually we could see what it would look like. Um, so that's why we're in pre-production with the plans to make a short film. So, yeah, it was largely the writing and the ace work of Phil Pearson, the writer. Was that an easy role that, to, to get into? Did you have to do much research? Um, I did. Um, but one thing I've realised is, as a woman myself, we don't know enough about the menopause. We don't know enough about the perimenopause. We don't know enough about women having to go through it much earlier. And I felt really naive. And I still do when I have conversations with women generally, that it, it's not a subject that's talked about enough. And I know there's been loads of stuff recently in the press comparatively to years ago, but I still feel like we're a little bit in the dark in terms of what women go through um, in relation to it. Yeah, and hope, hopefully uh, the podcast and the subsequent film will raise more awareness. What sort of difficulties did you find, you know, taking it from a play to putting it onto screen? Was there sort of, did you have to play around with the script? What, what sort of hurdles did you come up against? Um, well, Phil and I obviously met with Paul, who's the producer at Mount Maid. We discussed in terms of what we could do with it. We didn't just want it to be a talking head. So the script's been adapted very much to have other people integrated into it be that the woman and the kid on the train, be that the husband and relatives. Um, so it has been adapted visually, so to make it much more visual in terms of that. Um, but now we're at the stage where we want to build on connections. We want to know about charities out there. We want to know how this can be a springboard as a film to get people chatting about the menopause, the perimenopause, the women who have to go through it much earlier than you would expect. So that's one of the main reasons as well. We want to get it out there. And that's one of the wonderful things about art, isn't it, Lisa? You know, I mean, you're telling a story, but you don't know how that sort of reaction is going to get to other people that do need to raise awareness. Maybe you'll you'll catch somebody who is going through it and doesn't know what the symptoms are, and maybe it sort of leads them to to go go and seek medical help. And in terms of like your career, Lisa, what what have you been up to recently? Um, I'm a bit of a creative odd job, to be honest. So I'm always. Um, I'm still doing the writing, I still do the acting as well alongside. 
And um, what I've recently set up is my own little acting company as well. So my my new kind of venture is to try and get more working class actors out there. And um, so I've set up a bit of an acting company for local kids in Oldham because I'm based in Oldham now. And um, so that's one of the main things that I'm focusing on at the moment because. Being an actress from New Moston, I've realised we're few and far between. So yeah. <laughs> I try to encourage more of that where I can. Yeah, and obviously with the, with the theatre closing uh, recently as well in in Oldham, it's, it couldn't be a better time to sort of try and instil the arts again in in working class roots. And you're spinning a lot of plates, but still managing to put out brilliant content. Yeah, hopefully so. Yes, I've done a lot with um, Paul at. At Monk Maid. Um, you can listen to all the pod plays at thepodplay.co.uk. Um, so, yeah, I'm keen to keep working on material that I'm passionate about, material that gets people thinking, material that gets people talking and is useful to people out there as well. That's one of my, my main kind of loves in terms of writing and acting. I want people to care about it. Yeah, I'm sure they will. And, and gently drifting, when, when can we expect to, to see it or where's, and where's it going to be shown? Well, the plan is to start filming it in September. Um, so we've not actually filmed it yet. We've got the script ready. We've had the, the meetings. Um, so it's a case of let's get this ball rolling now, which is why I wanted to get it out there, get people listening to the pod play version of it um, so that we can make those connections, maybe get some local charities involved who would find it useful as well. Um, yeah, so you can listen to it at thepodplay.co.uk um, and Paul who runs Mank Maid Productions. You can get in touch with him at Mank Maid um, on Instagram or Twitter. So that's what we want to do. We want to get the ball rolling. We want to get some money behind it. We want to get connections with charities and actually get this short film made. Yeah, and I'm sure that you will. And I, I, I know Paul is a very very driven character and the, the, pl- the play is brilliant and I'm sure it deserves to be made into a film. Lisa, thank you so much for, for joining me. Have you got any plans for the rest of the weekend? Um, just entertain three children for the most part. <laughs> well, be- best of luck with that one then, Lisa. I'll let you get back to it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Take care. That Take was care. that was Lisa Whiteside there, and uh, we played a little bit of the podcast play gently drifting earlier on. That was made by Mank Made, and it's in pre-production as a short film that they're hoping to shoot in September. Make sure you rewind at, at the end of this show, and you'll be able to catch some of that. I'll go. Straight away to podcast, but not straight away. Wait till this show's ended and then you can go and do it. Podcast play uh, for Mank Made and I'm pretty sure it's on all streaming services.